Uh, Dr. Kaku, you're a renowned physicist. You accept that? Well, yeah, life is going to be, I think, found throughout the universe. However, I don't think they're going to want to come and strip mine the Earth. There are a lot of planets out there that are probably uninhabited, without restive natives. If you're a camper, are you going to sit down where there are a lot of scorpions and tarantulas and rattlesnakes? No, you're going to go where it's nice and clean of pests. So why would they bother with the Earth when there are lots of pristine planets with plenty of resources out there? There's no real point to mess with the natives. And it's not going to be quite like Columbus meeting a Native American and, and genocide. Think more of like the Vietnam War, okay? A, a intelligent species may simply say it's not worth it to get the natives angry. Avatar. A lot of planets, right. Did you there. see Avatar? I did. It's a great did you, movie. You liked it. Mm -hmm. As a physicist, you liked it. Well, it opens up whole worlds, right? Uh, perhaps Europa-type moons circulating around Jupiter uh, could have oceans under the ice cover. Seth, isn't it all kind of incomprehensible? Isn't it, with the exception of Dr. Kaku, isn't this larger than... You can't imagine it. I don't know what I'm going to have for lunch. Well, I, <laughs> well I, I hope it's not unimaginable, because after all, we're trying to imagine it, and we're not only doing that, we're trying to do an experiment, right? We'd like to know if it really is true up there. Now, I agree with Michio that they're not going to come here and strip mine the planet. You don't have to worry about that. In the movie, they, they go to Pandora for unobtainium, $20 million a kilogram, but you can work out the cost of transport, and this would be like ordering a book from Amazon and paying $6,000 for the shipping. We're not, you wouldn't do that, and the aliens are not going to come here for that. Could they come here for some other reason? Possibly. Right. But you know, David Brin said that they might not pick up our television, but they might pick up our very strong radars. Look, if they have the technology to come here and actually threaten us, they long ago could have the technology to pick up our signals. They'll know we're here. David, succinctly put, what do you believe? Oh, well, that's the whole point, Larry. Uh, as an astronomer, as a science fiction author, um, I've been thinking about the alien, discussing the alien uh, with everybody I could for the last 50 years. And what I believe is that everybody is too strong in their beliefs right now. Uh, SETI, the, the search for extraterrestrials, is called the only topic without a subject matter. And everybody gets passionate. They believe that they would have seen our signals by now. Um, th they believe that, th that, that uh, space flight is impossible, which was, is the standard SETI position, or that if there are aliens out there, they'll automatically be altruistic because that's wishful thinking where we're heading. I would like more open conversation about this. I'd like yeah. the SETI right, people to get involved. Dan, isn't it true that we, we know a little bit, but there's so much we, we don't know? And the answer to the question is, why don't they land in L.A. and New York? Dan? Uh, well, first of all, I'm glad that this is grounded in real science. I can't wait to see the dis dis discovery uh, special. But uh, they don't land here. They, they only land in isolated places. They have taken people, I believe. They do have technology. Lord Hill Norton of the uh, British Defense Staff Why said uh, that he York? believed tw 23 people, 23 different species are coming because they don't want anything to do with us. I don't think we will ever have a formal relationship, a formal contact with any alien species out there, especially after 9-11, when we broke our toys in the sandbox. If they were observing that, goodbye human race. And uh, honestly, I don't think they're a mass threat, but I do believe they're breaking the law. I'm serious. Title 18, 1202, okay. read the Travis Walton story. So how do you arrest them? Uh, that's the thing. The FBI should be on that right away. I don't think they're a mass threat. If you want to save lives in this country, teach people to drive better, remove the cocaine appetite in the United States, and stop people from texting while driving. That's the way to save lives. <laughs> no, we're gonna try I to look do at this. I look at this through the entertainment filter, Larry. That's why I I'm here. That. That's entertainment. why you're going to do another Ghostbusters, and I'm going to be in it again. Uh, you bet. We're working on it today. We'll be right back with more. Don't go away. Dr. Kaku, in your opinion, how did it all start? Probably on the Earth. Uh, probably in the oceans where there's liquid water. Uh, we, we physicists always say, follow the water. Liquid water is the amniotic fluid of life where DNA got off the ground. Is liquid vents. water redundant? Uh, <laughs> ice is actually quite common out of space. Uh, comets are made out of ice. Uh, liquid water is the most precious substance in the universe, and we have a lot of it on Earth. But why, why here and why then? Because there was water. 
Yeah, good. and we think that uh, water is the mixing bowl for DNA getting off the ground. Is there water on other planets? Uh, well, liquid water does not exist outside the Earth, other than maybe a satellite of Jupiter. So we think that it's a very precious commodity, and that's what we look for in outer space, the presence of water, especially liquid water. And also, you ask the question, why don't, why don't we, we see them? Why don't they make contact with us? Maybe they're so advanced that we're not even on their <clears throat> radar screen. We're so arrogant to believe that they're going to want to land on the White House lawn. I mean, if you see an ant in the forest, ant hill in the forest, you go down the, to the ants and say, I bring you trinkets, I bring you mm -hmm. beads, I give you nuclear energy, take me <laughs> to your ant leader. Is that what you do when you see an ant hill? I don't think so. Seth, the... Uh that concept sounds very interesting. Do you, Seth, believe, do you factually believe they're there? Well, uh, in my heart of hearts, Larry, obviously I think we're there. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this kind of research. Look, the SETI Institute's building a new antenna in Northern California, the Allen Telescope Array. This thing will be able to greatly accelerate the search. The fact that we haven't picked up a signal so far, and that's been mentioned several times here, it really doesn't mean a thing because we've just barely scratched the surface. It's the next 20, 30 years that counts. I think we may find a signal. Otherwise, it wouldn't do this job. It's not that lucrative. I, I, I did want to say something to Dan Aykroyd, who thinks they're here, in which case the whole question of whether we should try and contact them is somewhat moot. How many times does he go down to the L.A. airport and sit in the plane, and, and the captain comes on and says, you know, we're going to delay our departure here a little bit because there are unidentified flying objects in the area, and the FAA wants us to stay on the ground. I mean, it doesn't affect his remember life at Chicago, all, as far as sir. I can tell. Well, remember Chicago. I, I remember Chicago. <laughs> remember Chicago? What was that? Was that a weather anomaly? Something punched through a cloud. Yes, the it was a weather it, anomaly. Through saw it? Uh, I don't believe it was an weather anomaly. Weather anomaly. Okay. okay, all right, but I, I support SETI. Go to it. I just don't think they're calling. I don't think they call <laughs> the night that they took Barney and Betty. David has, <laughs> David, has NASA discovered anything? Well, well the whole, the, we could go on for hours about uh, paranoid theories like UFOs. I personally find the UFO aliens unlikely because the number of cameras is doubling every single year, and... The, the greys that they're talking about are such tedious, boring versions of aliens. I support Seth in that I have supported SETI all my life. But I think that it's been shown recently that SETI needs to change track. Um, SETI has failed to see the garish, huge garish beacons that Frank Drake expected out there. SETI should keep looking. It may, they may be farther away. But it, it turns out that what we should be looking for is more of those wow signals. And you do that not with a single telescope, but with 10,000 amateur telescopes in backyards all over the world. And this system could make sure that all parts of the sky were being watched all the time. And then we might see that wow signal come back, because calculations show that's how the aliens yeah. would far more likely try to communicate. Science fiction films have had some good alien storylines, which are true to life. Our experts will weigh in coming up.